All right, so like I said, I was gonna, we're going to copy this envelope automation to the other chains. Copy that. Okay, we'll go here to uh, bass drum. We did a bass drum. We did it to snare drum. Do the same to open hat, close hat. All right, so now <clears throat> if we look over here, Let's play this sequence. Okay, we notice first here, all the notes are coming in on each track, each chain rather, bass, drum, snare, and they're all leaving that chain. Okay, you see here in the, the key, they're coming, you have one note coming in on C, one on D sharp, C sharp, one on D, one on D sharp. Now, if we click on bass drum, we look over here, because we automated that sequence, chain selector, now each step is going through a, a different chain. Now, consequently, we have mute buttons on here, so that's how we're going to control the steps. So let's say we have a, after this, let's say we have a bass drum rack. I'm sorry, a drum rack. All right. And then on that drum rack on C2, let's move this up here to C2. We put a kick drum. I mean, who cares what it sounds like for now? This is just for demonstration purposes. All right, we'll put the, the kick drum on that note, snare on C sharp 2, All right, okay. Okay, <clears throat> so now all the C's are coming in to this chain and then getting organized by step, blah, blah, blah. So what we're going to do is we'll MIDI map control M to get the map mode. And for the bass drum, we're going to use these clip stop on the APC. Go down the line. All right, snare drum. We'll use these here. Close tab. What's going on here? Huh. Something's not working. Turn that off and on. Sometimes that works. I guess it did in this case. All right, there I go. Open hat. Okay. Now we can mute each of these chains, these steps rather, and we can control the sequence. All right. So if all of these are on. Yeah, there we go. So those are all off. Come on, of course. Alright. So now oh, they're all on, of course, it's good they're all gonna play. Obviously you can see how that works. the same eight notes. It's all through the automation through the chains. Turn those on and off. Now if we want to get some blinking lights so we know where one the beats are, let's add another MIDI track. And we're gonna make a MIDI clip in there, but it's gonna be a, the value of an eighth note.
not a loop. I think that's about the right length. I need to open this up here, the launch area, the little L. Change this, the follow. This here needs to be two. This is beats or bars, quarters, and sixteenths, I think. I know this is sixteenths, and two, one eighth is two sixteenths, so this needs to be two here. This needs to be to play the next. And then I think the rest of that stays the way it is. Now, if you duplicate this down the line or copy paste, all right, duplicate should work. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, let's put this here. And now, see how that plays in sequence? I'm just going to keep repeating. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to MIDI map these to the bottom row of the launch editor. I don't know what that is. Okay, now we play this. See how it blinks. Of course, this row is blinking too because this is the same. The launch editor is still active. All of these launch buttons still work. The navigation buttons still work. Everything still works on the APC the way that it normally does with the auto map, with the exception of the clip stop. These three rows of buttons, this last row button, which I'm using for the LED indicator lights. Everything else is auto map. Now, if you do want to go back to uh, auto map mode for these particular buttons, then you would just go back into the MIDI settings, turn those two off, and it's back to the way that it was. The standard mode, mute and all that business. But that's how you make a step sequencer in Ableton 8. For the APC 40 specifically, but you could really uh, do use the same principle for any controller. Have fun, and we'll see you next time.